We already recorded the video, but I forgot to mention this, so I figured I'd put this in now. If you're kind of squeamish or faint of heart or don't like the subject of everything we're going to be going over, which are some sensitive topics, I do recommend turning away a little bit, as well as as we talk about some things. We're not going to be putting up anything um, gruesome, but I am going to be putting a couple images up um, over what we're talking about. Nothing of any dead people, nothing of anything like that, just a couple pictures to kind of put a face to who we're talking about and whatnot um and i do want to also say that this was made in no disrespect to any of the victims families of the victims or anyone involved in anything that we do talk about in this video it is surely respectful and i mean no harm by anything that we talk about in this video all right what is up ladies and gentlemen welcome back to another one i'm here with my boy deadpool and um, a while back, I mentioned doing little podcasts with background noise as just video games. So that's what we're here to do. Um, but before we jump into that, I wanted to announce like just a couple things. One would be, if you haven't noticed already, there's a series coming, which is already kind of in progress as of like three videos now. Modded World at War Zombies maps, custom maps themselves. I'm going to be jumping in and doing the most popular ones. If anybody has any suggestions, send them to me and I'll hunt the map down and get it and try it out. Um, past that, the whole podcast thing with the games in the background, we're calling it Gamecast and that's also going to be its own series. Hopefully Deadpool will be back for those, but you'll also see some other guests on there soon as well. Amongst them is another one that's coming up actually to raise awareness for drug addiction or addictions in general talking with um someone who does wish to remain anonymous so that'll be the next game cast coming up um but yeah so i'm here with deadpool and <laughs> the subject of uh today is just how, how to get away with murder so we're, we're off to a great start <laughs> what better dun, guy dun, to ask dun. the than deadpool uh he'd probably know that <laughs> uh, you can go ahead and start it up by the way just so we have background noise <laughs> Let me just choke really quick. Uh, so yeah, uh, something that sparked this little thing was, if you didn't know, it's most, you think of serial killers and murderers, and a lot of them are from like the 80s. Like what is it, like John Wayne Gacy and like all of them, they were in the 80s, wasn't uh, Ed, it? Yeah, you had, you had Ed Gein as well. Ed Gein was one yeah. of the most want to say like popular ones so you can oh, thank yeah. him for having like Leatherface and Jason and Freddy Krueger. Um, was really he the one that wore dude, faces? Dude. Um, he was the one that had a belt made out of nipples. His curtain shade was, his lamp shade was um, faces stitched together. Now having, having a human suit, right? You're wearing like an entire, an entire person's skin. How? Yeah. How do you get away so with like, that? <laughs> like, I don't know. How wasn't he caught sooner? He, well, he didn't get away with it. Well, I mean, he but he like went it, on. If you have a lampshade mold full of faces, like that means there were multiple faces involved. Like that means he had to have done this at some time. I don't know a whole lot about it being this a whole, but like, like how the hell? Oh man, I want to say because it, it had to do with something. It being up north, you know, being up, up north, the snow, it's, you know, Hey, I'm up north. It's kind of hard to really... Yeah, but once the snow clears up, then that's when the dead bodies, I presume, are, like... Shining? They're coming shining. out, you know? <laughs> what um, a proper word for dead bodies. Don't you love when the snow melts and the bodies start shining? Yep. Oh, so God. It puts the lotion on its skin. Or it know? gets the hose again. <laughs> Oh god. Well, so for Ed Gein, that's obviously one of the more popular ones, and um, and then there's and then there's like the the oddball ones, the ones that remained unsolved. Uh, you know, like the the Black Dahlia murder, the foot mystery, which I didn't actually know about, but um, supposedly that's an, that's one of the weird ones where it's like there was this girl apparently she was walking down a beach. And she found a shoe. And when you find shit on the beach, you fuck with it. That's just kind of the way it goes. Um, and she opened it up, and there was a sock inside. She opened the sock, and it was a severed foot. Now, this would only presumably be strange, because then a few days later, a bunch of other feet would wash up on shore. 
It was remained unsolved. They don't know if it's attached to murders. Some people speculate that it was actually just like tsunami victims, but the fact it was all feet led it to become a murder case, which was then unsolved and remained a cold case. That's intense. Yeah. So those are like the weird ones. So if you were to like, let's say you have a really bad like foot fetish, which you're Deadpool, I'm sure you, you know, we're not going to get into that. Oh, I um, love it. <laughs> if you were to just like, yeah, would you like, where are the rest of the bodies? Like if you were going to get away with that, where would you put the bodies? That's such mm. a weird one that I just, it's such a cold case that it just, it's weird. And I wouldn't even know where to start with that to be honest with you, but. That's what I'm saying. Do you, do you know who, uh, I'm pretty sure you know who, who OJ is, right? Yeah. OJ Simpson? Of course. I feel like that's one of the most popular, like, one of the most popular well, cases of anything in history. When he and, um, oh, let me get rid of this guy real quick. This shotgun is loud. So, when that whole scenario and he like decided to remove from where was it? I think he was playing for the Bronx. So when he during the whole allegation when he was running away and they caught him and whatever, he decided to move to Florida. Yeah. Well my grandmother at the time was actually cleaning houses. And um, one of the houses that she would clean occasionally was his house. Really? Yeah. So I was able to play with his kids. <clears throat> the that is wild. And, and the son. Yeah. So the house that I went to was sort of in like the core gable area of yeah. where I'm at, sort of heading towards the Redlands. So it's kind of like city mess mixed in with. Um, uh, the country, sort of. That kind gotcha. of makes sense. You know, a little bit of both worlds. That makes sense. <clears throat> he had a he had a lot of he had a lot of acre, but he also had like a Walmart, everything around his his area. You know. Yeah. <clears throat> Did... So we so we would go to his house all the time. Dude would have like weed everywhere. Oh God, um, that doesn't surprise me and, somehow. And whatever the case may be. Oh shit. But, dude. I, I wasn't like old enough to understand what was going on. I mean, my cousin, which is older than me, she's 33. Yeah, she's 33, 33 or 34. <clears throat> she would always be like freaked out every time we would go to his house. And I never knew why. Yeah. Until I got older. That's the best thing to look back on. You're like, oh, that. that's messed up. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, holy shit, dude! I was in this guy's house. Did your did your mom or any or your Fucking did you say it was your grandma? Yeah, my grandmother. Did she ever like snoop around? <laughs> I feel like I couldn't help myself if I were in her shoes. To be perfectly honest. Hold on. I can't hear you. Yeah, I have my volume on the game, almost none. Yeah, I should have done that. What was it? That you no, said? I was I was just asking, did she ever like snoop around? Because I feel like if I were in her shoes, I almost couldn't help myself. To be honest with you, we never really even asked her. Um, she's she passed away already though. Oh, so. I'm sorry. Yeah, so there's really no way of like knowing really what she thought of it. That's know? fair. Yeah, you never know. It could have been just another job, or it could have been, could have been uh, maybe an, an anxious position for her, <laughs> being in such a hot seat of know, a, a house. But when I found out about it, I was shocked. I was like, "Holy shit!" I was in this guy's house this whole time. Yes, I just got the car stuck. Oh yeah. There we go. It's beautiful. But um, 
on the remarks of you know him and all the um we'll call them the classics like the ones the names that everybody knows richard ramirez the zodiac killer um ed gein um yeah he was john wayne gates that was, that was a cloud case. yeah i think um that was a weird case too yeah they all they're all so iconic in a very morbid way but what do you think but do you think do you think they'll actually be able to get away with murder in this day and age that's what i was actually about to ask i was about to ask why do you think there's no more serial killers when they all did it it in the most respectable way possible i want to say easily because they all were able to easily. do a lot of horrible things in my opinion and from the looks I of it if you say... look at the body counts some of them almost did it nearly flawless unless they were like leaving hints yeah yeah this is true um i want to say overall technology just the increase of technology is just like for instance walmart has one of the highest securities there is um you you could if you were to steal something and um they were to catch your your face or whatever sorry um go back to i heard up until walmart has one of the best security systems and then it cut out so, yeah so walmart has like walmart has a. Uh, one of the craziest AIs in its in its cameras so it has the best face re recognition like it's a, a par with like the FBI damn near um if you were to trespass or whatever the case may be for why the Walmart doesn't want you shopping in their plaza um and you were to trespass the guards aren't gonna catch you the cameras will like they, that's fair enough we'll alert them and, tell, and say hey look listen uh this guy that has a trespassing uh uh conviction is now um inside your freaking store and uh we don't want him here what are you gonna do about it yeah and that's when the security guards decide to act like cops that and, uh, is that is fair It definitely, it definitely feels like back in the day, it was a lot more manpower, a lot of genuine, like, mm -hmm. physical research, physical investigation. But these days, there's so many cameras and everything's on such a hard, like, I wouldn't say lockdown, but such a hard monitor state that it definitely successfully reduced specifically those crime rates. Because obviously, we still have a lot of crime rates but that's that's a that's a different animal to tackle but when it comes to serial killers which are a very hefty thing yeah we've managed yeah, to no, nearly completely, completely stop it like i realized that nowhere in my lifetime have i ever heard of a serial killer on the loose like you don't hear that Um, I think the closest thing would be, which is another awful tragedy, but like the shootings. I think the shootings that happen are the closest thing to serial killers that we've experienced in this day and age. Yeah, and I'd agree with you there too. Heavily agree with you there too. I also think it's also because like the cameras will see somebody if they commit a crime and leave. But the shootings are an instantaneous, they happen. Like, they show up, they do it, and then, you know, it ends. I think that's why they're so much harder to stop than a serial killer. Because they're just this instantaneous burst of violence that, that like, it only gets stopped after it happens. Because it's so immediate. Which is honestly yeah, kind of scary. Like, yeah, I feel like shootings like that are on another level of like um men mental illness like that is true just being a, a serial killer it, you you have mental illness problems but i feel like it's on a different path than a shooters you know like i feel like shooters are like i don't know i feel like shooters are like a 
Uh, I don't really think a lot of shootings are premeditated. I could be wrong, but I feel like they're more so when a person just breaks. Like when somebody just decides that they're snap. Like they yeah. don't decide that they're snapping, but when they just Based snap, but like of emotions. I feel like a serial killer is like made, like raised, almost like mm -hmm. abuse or trauma, and it's more so premeditated. I'm not saying shootings aren't, but you know what I mean, though. Like. No, those are a lot more immediate and um i definitely think that's why i mean that says a lot about our almost our society in a weird way too because we don't really have serial killers but we do have a lot of people reaching a breaking point which could could possibly be a sign about the world we live in if you really start to think about it i'm not saying that the you know shooters or whatnot are good people i'm just saying I feel like a lot of them, we're, we are, we do forget that at one, you know, at one point they were just another person that was pushed to a limit, you know? A lot of them even right. felt unheard or whatnot. It's interesting when you start to look at how they felt before these, like serial killers, once again, we don't really have insight on, at least I don't think so, how they felt or whatnot. But these are all like absolute breaking points of just aggression. a little hard to hear you all this zombie mumbling over here yeah but i i definitely i think psychology has well obviously is the primary thing at play here if we really wanted to understand it um on how they thought like i also i remember hearing like when it comes to um when it came to serial killers they were often actually people with like very high IQs. That's something I found interesting too. Like this wasn't just serial killers weren't just pretty much anybody. They were like some of them were very intelligent. Uh, I remember a few in specific. I just I think Ed Gein or not Ed Gein. Um, Ted Bundy was one of them who actually was like above average intelligence. Yeah. I think. Yeah, dude. That dude, that dude was smart. I think that's another reason that they got but, away with it too, was for so long. It definitely has to play in with how clever they were. But, um, back on track though, I definitely think that technology for sure is probably the primary thing um, as to why there's no more serial codes really. Which definitely is a good thing. It's just strange when I thought about it because I, I was thinking about it the other day. I was like, I have not heard of a serial killer in like ever in my lifetime, <laughs> pretty much. Um, I wonder when was the latest serial killer? I don't know, actually. I would be kind of curious. You know, I'm actually literally about to just here. Hang on. Um, you want to drive my uh, snowmobile here, and I'm gonna Google this in the background really quick, just out of genuine curiosity. Oops, I don't want to drive. Here. There. When was the last serial killer? As uh, that is a that is a good question. I think it was uh, some dude in Atlanta something like that <laughs> I think So it looks like, now this could be wrong, West Mesa murders, uh, somebody who hasn't been caught yet, um, up to 2015 I believe, this could be wrong, this is just what I found off, you know, Wikipedia had a very brief search. Yeah, they found 11 women's bodies, 
11 women bodies remains dug up um as just bones buried in new mexico after they went missing in 2000 to 2005 and they were just dug up in 2015 or 2011 from the looks of it as it was a really brief research but that's that's apparently what it said was the last one and he was never caught although no other um murders were linked to him so we don't know if he's actually or them we don't even know who they are but we don't know if they're still active or not So that seems to be the only one that I could briefly find off like a really short search, but um, which is, that's interesting. I didn't, I didn't never actually knew about that one. What would you think like a modern, like a very modernized? Actually, I'll wait for after the loading screen here, just so I don't have as much to edit out in the YouTube video. Yeah, okay, I got you. Buddy. Just because you can't hear on the loading screens. <laughs> so, um, what I was gonna ask is, what do you, what do you even think, like, let's say, like, a very, a very modernized, if not a little bit futuristic, we're not talking, like, dystopian future, but, like, slightly futuristic, like, a few years down the road, what do you even think a serial killer would be like these days? As a, a weird part of me feels like they'd be a hacker, somebody that could bypass security. To be perfectly honest, because hmm. if they're gonna get away I with it, it would, I don't know. I I think it it would become a chemical warfare at that point. Like poisoning people. Sort of, yeah. Almost kind of like an it. assassin more than a serial killer. Or. Like a hidden agenda, such as like government trying to take over another government. Look at this. Uh, oh virus yeah. As an example, you know, if someone wanted to cripple us or something like that, or or better yet, the best way to cripple someone or society would be their water supply. Everyone drinks water, you know. Yeah. To be honest, I feel like so. so I was like I was always when I was a kid for some reason I was really scared of terroristic attacks. And I, I came up with this theory about, like, our weak point, and I never really considered, like, if somebody poisoned the water, because that would just kill our planet. Something I considered was a virus transmitted by money, because money travels everywhere, and it's touched by everyone. And so my biggest fear was some sort of virus being on money. That was, oddly enough, one of my irrational fears. <laughs> Which, at these days, almost doesn't seem irrational. If you want my honest opinion. <laughs> I, when I was younger, I wouldn't even touch money. No, that sounds, um, there is, there is a statistic that says that, uh, each dollar bill has a certain percentage of cocaine on it. Residue, so. Jesus. Yeah. That is... That's that's sketchy. <laughs> so that seems pretty believable. So if there's you could find cocaine on a dollar bill, I'm pretty sure some chemical warfare shit like that could definitely happen. Which is terrifying because there's how the fuck but, would you track that? You wouldn't basically like. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to track that. Although I don't know of any that, virus that would, that would like linger long enough. I don't think. And some, something like the coronavirus we lucked out on, I mean, I'm not saying we lucked out on the coronavirus, I'm just saying it's respiratory, so the, the idea of it traveling through money, I'm pretty sure it can't, I think. Well, I'm not entirely sure. Like, if, if this would have been like... Come on, sit down. Sit down, there you go. If this would have been like, back, back in the days would have been different but we have technology you know like unfortunately my, my mom got it and so did my father my mom got it and it was pretty bad but my dad got it and it was like under brink of death so but the reason he didn't pass away was because of the technology we have you know to oversee this it's not like if it was like the 1800s or something like that so yeah where they have to get tricky. the corona out of you by using leeches <laughs> <laughs> right, that'd be, <laughs> that'd be insane. 
Oh, perfect. No, but I, I definitely... Technology performs man-made miracles, if I had to put it in a phrase. We have reached a very high technological standpoint where we can do what I'm pretty sure people, even just 20 years ago, would probably think were impossible. Like a self-driving car? <laughs> yeah. Although, I mean, some people way back in the day, if you watch some of the sci-fi movies put around this date, I remember, I don't remember what it was, but in like the 50s or some shit like that, there was this movie where it happened in like 2000 something, which obviously was like way down the road for them. And they, in the movie we had flying cars and now all we have is sex robots and self-driving cars. We're a little <laughs> off, but... No, but we yeah, are very technologically there, advanced. Really. managed to obtain a proton <clears throat> and send it through a mile tunnel and if you were to stick your hand in this proton you can't even see it's moving so fast it would cut your arm in half i don't know how they use it to like mitigate how a black hole and stuff would work or whatever the case may be <laughs> i remember yeah. reading about that That's actually thing that you can't even see insane <laughs> i remember i because i was working on so i had um i was actually gonna make a video one day about why i believe that space flight like in star wars is very much possible with technology that we have because i i was researching that and um yeah i'm gonna give you a little a weird little thing i studied this and i was like i was i was trying to figure it out um essentially if you like toss two i don't remember the exact particles but it's like really specific ones or some weird shit it's been a couple years since i looked into this but if you you toss two particles into a particle accelerator right and you collide them you have a chance of creating a black hole so black hole, basically yeah. what happens around the black hole is called an event horizon and it basically stretches reality in layman's terms and what happens is it creates its own gravity. So I had this theory that if you figured out how to sustain a small black hole and create your own field of gravity, you could literally levitate a ship, right? Like, that's, it sounds stupid, but if you really think about it, if you controlled your own gravitational pull, you could move your ship in impossible ways at weird speeds, so long as, you know, the people inside would survive. But... No, so I was I was reading about right. that because I was like, you know, it's not that far fetched if you really think about it. At least in my opinion, it's not that far fetched. No, it's definitely possible. Look at magnets. <clears throat> yeah. They create their own um, gravitational pull. You know. Absolutely. But, um, I feel like space flight would be based on making how? your own gravity. If we wanted to get and to like the, Star the Wars level. Is, but have we made it out of space though? Well, that's yeah. a question for another video. That's a that's a tricky one. I know a lot of <laughs> theories on that one. Dude, I have so much. <laughs> but yeah, we'll, we'll we'll definitely say that for another. But um, back to the topic: technology. Technology and yeah. murderers, not space travel. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> Alright, guy. We'll definitely have to touch base on that one later. That'll be a fun one. I gotta get rid this guy, gotta get rid of that guy. But anyways, yeah, no, so technology has advanced to an exponential rate, um, and serial killers have decreased to second to none. Um, so which is obviously linked, which means in my opinion, like I said, I, I feel like if there were ever a serial killer in modern day and age, I feel like they'd be a hacker, somebody who's very technologically talented, in my opinion. I feel like that's how you'd get I away with murder. You. You'd have to be like... You'd have to be hella good, to be honest. I really don't see it. I don't know, maybe somebody... I feel like it's 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 partially like what you said, like you were, you had to be like bred into it. So in a sense of like... Could you imagine having your, your parents breed you like burn your fingertips so you had no no fingertips so the government couldn't track you like stuff like that and they bred you into that yeah i don't know if you just basically yeah if they did that and then you snapped it's basically like if elon musk went postal then that'd be like you know <laughs> oh, that'd be, crazy. <laughs> that'd be 
<laughs> serial killer of the century. God, just imagine if a super genius, like, like, I don't even know what to use as like an example, like Bill Gates or like Elon Musk or, or a, someone or like Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein. Einstein. <laughs> oh no, no, I mean like imagine if one of them snapped. <laughs> We are, I feel like we lucked out that we haven't had like a super genius serial killer. That would be like the real life equivalent of a super villain. If you want to be perfectly honest here. I think the, I think the closest one to that would have been Nikola Tesla. The snap. He would have been a crazy murderer if he would have that, snapped. That, imagine chain like electrocutions all across the fucking... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that'd be crazy. he's the reason why we even have electricity on the level that we have it on. Well, it's not because of Edison. Yeah. But this guy, if he wanted to snap and like cripple, he can definitely do that. Like most of our technology right now is based because of him. Like literally, like cell phones, everything, like yeah. Wi-Fi, um, wireless energy, everything is like based around this guy. So if this guy really wanted to be like <laughs> Dr. <Doctor> Evil. <laughs> <laughs> when billion dollars. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna call it the next one here. Beams. <laughs> wanted freaking sharks with freaking laser beams on their heads. Oh man. Yeah, he would have been hey, you wanna drive? more than capable of doing that. Alright. Deadpool. Oh wow, I was gonna have you drive. Baby, come back. No, so, I mean, honestly, I feel like that runs down pretty much what a modern... Ow! Serial killer oh, would honestly look oh, like. I hate, I hate Tempest. Yeah, me too. I really don't think there's like that much more to it, to be perfectly honest. Like, technology saved us from, from that. And society started Big to kind of create a new breed of murderers, ultimately. I feel like the shooters are just a different breed of serial killer. And people will always be nosy. <laughs> That's another thing. Oh yeah, especially after DNA. everything, like, people are a lot- I feel like they're yeah, more yeah, nosy than they used to be. But I guess that falls into, like, technology or whatnot. Yeah, so, honestly, I feel like some people are against technology, like, I know a few people who aren't very happy with how, um, prominent technology is, but it's undeniable that it did, in fact, save us from a lot of things. Like, even the conversation earlier, coronavirus, without technology, it would not be going good right now. <laughs> like... Yeah, you know, so it's a little, or even the common flu, you know? Yeah. So that is insane. Small kids, thank technology. <laughs> stay in school. Always. You are our future. <laughs> yeah, please stay in school. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull us out of the video then here. I feel like, I mean, we ultimately we, we covered everything there really is to cover on it. Like, you know, the majority of it is, yeah, in I mean, fact, self-explanatory right. to an extent. Yeah, the elephant in the room is definitely technology is gonna stop everything, you know? Yeah. That's the main reason, so we definitely covered that. You know, something that I didn't think of was technically didn't okay now i don't i don't want to say the two are linked but i i just thought of something interesting too if you look at like history 
most of these serial killers happened before 9-11. And after 9-11, security bumped... It, it was a sacrifice that made us realize that security is vital. And I feel like from that bump, we started to pay more attention to it. And I think that was one of the events that tr like chain reaction triggered security jumping to what it is now. And I feel like that has something to do with that as well. That's that's when the Patriot Act in, was enabled, which everyone like voted in. It sounds nice, obviously, the Patriot Act, you know, you know yeah. patriotic, you hear it, but in reality, it gave the, the government permission to spy on you if they thought you were a terrorist ever since 9-11 happened, you know? So ever since that happened, like, and since technology's been booming, they just found easier ways to... Like, there's a theory that said that Facebook was actually created by a CIA agent. You the Zuck. <laughs> yeah, you know, allegedly, you know? Allegedly. So, like, if, if they have, like... And we, we ourselves make ourselves vulnerable sometimes. Like, we have Instagram, we're posting, we're trying to flag, hey, I bought this new car, I bought this new house, but yeah, you're still, you're posting your address on, online, or you're showing where you live, and you're Which, giving people, like, premeditated thoughts. And, and you know, that you know. does flip me to the other side of the coin. I'm surprised security and the internet hasn't skyrocketed serial killers. People can pull your IP, people can do so much shit, and it just doesn't happen. Yeah, it, like, cancels yeah. itself out. Security gives the platform for awful people. However, it also gives a platform for protection from awful people, and it just nulls itself out, and then we we get the world that we're in now, and it's the weirdest shit. Well, due due to the reason we have the protections we have right now is because of yeah, is because of what's happened, you know, like the dude who yeah. um, who hacked the FBI, you know, the, the <laughs> FBI was like, well, we're gonna lock you up, or you could work for us, you know. Yeah. And initially, what do you think he did? He ended up working. That's, I guess, that's one way to get a job with the FBI. You know? Yeah. I mean, I don't recommend it. I can't really condone that. <laughs> but no, not at all. But like, he made it effortless, you know. And then the same yeah. dude with Sony when they hacked PlayStation, he also said, "Look how easy it is for me to hack you." Also got a job for Sony by hacking, you know. And then they yeah. have to defend, even though Sony still has this bullshit every now and then. But it does much better than what it was then. Yeah. So, I, I definitely do agree with you there. Hundred. Yeah. But needless to say, um, yeah, that pretty much resolves. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this out of this video. Deadpool, thanks for uh, popping in here. Um, I'll put a link to your stuff um, in the the comments and the the description if you want, obviously. Um, and additionally, you know, I'm going to be having more of these, so if you, if you did enjoy this, we're going to be touching really weird topics and off the beat shit. Just so, personally, um, I do want to say, for anybody that watched this far, part of the reason that I'm doing this as well is because YouTube is a creative platform, and though I enjoy gaming, I, I would like to begin using YouTube at what it's made for as a genuine creative platform by also making other um types of content like yes there was a game in the background but that's not really what my focus was on on this video so i i find it more enjoyable and easier for me to continue doing youtube if i sprawl out and also do more interesting things than just gaming um things that can even be deemed educational at some point um so yeah, that's that's the sole purpose of this. Uh, if you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe. Subscribe to Deadpool. Um, follow him. Not too closely though. I know what this video is about. Let's not get weird. Um, <laughs> subscribe. Make sure you liked it and everything. If you want more content, more like this is going to be coming soon. And the whole other modded series for Custom Zombies map is already up. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.